Welcome to the shooting show. This week, Stuart Wilson takes his ATN x into the Fox Box and heads off on Fox Patrol. Plus we bring you all the latest news from the shooting world. My latest box seat overlooks a very foxy muck hill. It's sighted so you can sneak in with minimal disturbance. Once you're into the seat, you can open the windows, front and side. The windows also open upwards, which shade your face from the sunlight, which would make it shine like a white beacon. literally just uh, been in the high seat, I don't know, more than, sort of, no more than 10 or 15 minutes and barely got the windows open. It's, it's quite a sort of warm, humid day. Um, there's been a bit of cloud and, and rain early this morning so I don't really think the weather can decide what it wants to do. Um, so I'm just in a t-shirt, try to keep as cool as possible. is switching about the little bit of wind that does sort of turn on um, but literally as soon as I 
glass down this direction. Uh, there's a little fox laid on the muck hill, so and uh, like a plank, um, I've left the SD card from the X site on my desk. I've not even fetched the cover, so I normally sort of leave the SD card in the cover as a little bit of a reminder, so that when I look at the side of the SD, uh, the side of the X site. I can see that I've had the SD card out rather than put the cover over and there'd be no SD card in there but uh, I've failed there and, and not managed to get it uh, recorded through the X site so you'll have to manage with the footage from the uh, XA20. Uh, when I initially um, sort of scouted this area before I put this, this box seat up um, I had some bait out on the muck hill, some uh, rabbit front halves and, and paunches um, from a rabbit in session and set a trail camera up just to see, you know, how, if anything was kicking around um, and put it up in the afternoon and by, I think, certainly the same afternoon there was a, a fox coming onto uh, the bait that I put down literally that day and then backwards and forwards all night which would kind of indicate maybe that there's a yeah, he's a, you know, either a dog fox or a vixen that's got a set somewhere. Um, and then the other week when I was actually sat with the stalking gun, um, a fox came out on the other high seat on the, uh, on the game strip and presented a shot again in sort of short order and within five minutes and drilled him through the shoulders and he sort of spun round and went maybe, I don't know, four or five yards and, and expired in the long grass. Um, and there's other occasions where I've seen odd fox about when I've been been stalking, and rather than sort of spoil my stalking, I've got the uh, little bit the, the start to my my cull, and then uh, target the foxes a little bit more specifically. Also, um, a few days ago, whilst stalking from this sink. Um, Missed the opportunity on a on a fox, a, a good mature fox looked like a, a big dog fox to me. Uh, it was coming down the the muck hill, and the wind was pushing across slightly diagonal. Um, and I'm tracking him with the camera, and he's sort of bouncing in and out of the muck hill, um, proving sort of quite difficult to keep on him uh, with the camera, let alone the gun. And uh, in the end, I basically I ran out of space as the fox. Effectively caught my scent. Uh, I got a big nose full of my uh, cologne and uh, spun on his heels. I didn't even think twice about it, no scent in, no nothing. Just literally spun on his heels and that was it. He was gone, he was away, so I didn't even turn back for a, a, a second look. So um, he's proving uh, a, a little bit bit tricky to get. I'm sure it's the, one of the, one of the, certainly one of the foxes that was showing up on the, uh, on the trail cam anyway certainly on this bait, so. but I will catch up with him eventually. I'm about done now. Um, I don't think I'm going to sit through to through to dark. Um, maybe that I whiz out a little bit later. Um, I'm going to leave the one that's uh, expired on the muck hill on the muck hill. I'll just go and pick the one up behind. Um, see what he was uh, scratching around on. Um, and then uh, now that I've got the X sight onto the my foxing rifle, um, I can try and and get out on odd nights over these next sort of week or so and uh, see what it's like um, 
uh, dedicated you know, night, night sessions. Um, get me illumination right and we should be good. After grabbing some tea, I popped to see an old friend and have a scout around some ground before we officially shot it. As I left, I was greeted with two big bright eyes as I went down his lane. He had already said to me, help yourself if you see any foxes. But in my haste, I hadn't put new batteries into the illuminator, so I was struggling with it on its lowest setting. as I cautiously got myself over the electric fence to retrieve the shot fox before moving off to another patch. Nicely into the chest, pop straight out the back, quick and clean to be fair. It's not the slickest of operations um, getting up into the into the top of the truck. Um, sometimes having somebody else's uh, dr driver um, can cover a bit more ground, but to be fair there's areas here that I like to sort of target from time to time. There's a wood in front of me that's sort of, there's a nice little foxy corner that's about sort of 100, 120 yards. Um, I would say the far corner, leading corner, if any foxes do appear, is maybe going to be just sort of pushing a couple of hundred yards. But there's a good amount of stubble there. There's still the straw um, runs that have been spat out of the back of the combine. So I think there's plenty of ground there to be fair for foxes. Also behind me, there's a um, a big lump of, of uh, corn that's not been cut yet. Um, some of the headlands have been done. There's a big grass margin down it. Um, and right in the middle of it, there's a, there's a pond as well. The call is now used to try and tempt any foxes that may be laid in the area. After spotting them with the white light, I switch to the infrared and the night scope. off he was. Um, seemed like a reasonable distance but he kind of came in and was coming towards us um, and I, I can't figure out whether he was maybe laid down or whether he was just behind a little bit of corn. Um, I made him out as best I could, it certainly sort of knocking 150 yards, maybe a bit more. Um, the shot went and the, uh, the illuminator cut off so um, yeah, from the sound of it it sounded right so I'm just going to go and have a, have a mooch and See what uh, see what I've got. Last night I was parked a, a good way back, um, out the top of the vehicle, um, and there was a fox that had come to the edge of the wood 
and he's given me the run around a little bit and he sort of made his way out. And I think last night I'd kind of got fused with the, confused with the two different sets of, of telegraph poles when you get out here, I'd come looking for this, this fox. As I shot, as the shot went off, the infrared illuminator turned off. So I didn't get a, a, a visual on, on the fox running away, but the shot felt good. Uh, I was on him nice and steady. I kind of had the uh, sort of feeling that he was maybe, if he, if he was sat in front of something or sort of laid down. So I kind of thought I might get a, a nice raking shot if I'd made contact with the body. Um, and lo and behold, <laughs> little foxes down here, I've had to come back the following day. I couldn't find him for love and money last night. I was I went over the straw, I thought there he's and I, of course with the footage on the on the scope I couldn't sort of review it instantly. Um and I hadn't recorded it with the big camera either, so I found my fox down there and you could you could see him last night in the uh in the uh, in the X site. He was it was really sort of dark. I didn't know whether it was a sort of reaction with the sort of the infrared or what have you, but we'll get over and have a look at him. He really is he's a he's an unusual colour. Good fox to get is that. That's a good mature fox. And it looks like. Yeah, it's a dog fox. So that's fantastic. Stuart putting the X site through its paces there. And now it's the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. There's no scientific evidence to support further restrictions on lead shot. That's what the Countryside Alliance has told a European consultation on the future of lead. The ECHA consultation is potentially looking to standardise lead shot laws across Europe and is seen as a major threat to the use of lead-based ammunition despite Brexit. But the Countryside Alliance has now made a strong response to the consultation, saying it should focus on the enforcement of the current legislation, not the implementation of further impractical restrictions. The latest stats reveal that rural crime cost the UK £39 million last year, and it's set to grow 20% this year if the current rate holds. Criminals are targeting quads, pickups, tools and animals, forcing farmers and keepers to invest in high-tech gear to fend them off. The Countryside Alliance said this would not come as a surprise to the many rural businesses and communities who are at the sharp end of these statistics. James Debman has taken another step on the road to world domination, winning double trap at the ISSF Junior World Cup in Porpetto. He led the final from start to finish, ending up with 70 hits, four ahead of the nearest competitor. And he set a new Junior World record in the process. Double trap is set to be removed from the Olympics if the IOC accepts proposals made earlier this year by the ISSF. For more, don't miss Clay Shooting Magazine. And finally, don't forget the Clay Shooting Classic DTL is this weekend. Taking place from Friday to Sunday at Bywell, the DTL boasts a huge prize fund including a Parazzi shotgun and heaps of cash. With 200 targets shot over two days, you'll get a lot of bang for your buck. Whoever wins the main shoot takes home the DTL trophy, then class and category winners shoot off for the Parazzi. Get your entry in now to be in with a chance. That was the Shooting Show News. Well that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show.